Hi guys, this is Step Rock, and I'm going to give you an easy tutorial on an introduction to arrays, how to use them in Game Maker. This is going to be the easy tutorial, so uh, I'm not going to get super deep with it. And if I'm moving too slow, I'm not trying to insult you, I apologize. I'm actually trying to make sure we keep everybody on board and I don't lose anybody. For those of you who want to know, I am using NCH Video Recorder, and I'm using a Blue Snowball Ice microphone for this recording. Uh, if you're anything like me, you've already done some array tutorials, and what happens is you just want to rage quit right in the middle of it because people tend to get off track and they're going off in another direction and they're losing you. Uh, so we're going to try to stick uh, to a specific example. And we're going to go through some PowerPoint here real quick just to give you an overview of what arrays are and how they're used, and then we'll jump over to Game Maker. Okay, you guys ready for this? Let's go. Uh, the best way to look at an array is what it's used for, and this is probably why people kind of get all crazy when they're doing array tutorials. They're so darn flexible. It's hard to really pin down an array and say, this is what it's for. An array can be used for, as you see on my screen here, an inventory system, a spec sheet, switching weapons. We're going to use that kind of a concept in the tutorial. You can use it for tracking your ammo or the magic that's needed per item. Uh, so it's, it's really cool. And they're written out. You've no doubt seen this before, but I'll show it right there. And it'll have a number associated with each level. So you see up in the top right, use 0, use 1, use 2. They're always numbered 0 through a bajillion. Uh, whatever. Uh, and in the case of our tutorial, we're going to use uh, magic switching, so it'll be the spell book. Uh, the way that I like to look at an array is that each layer of it, each row of it, is kind of like a variable. And the entire array as a whole is like a library. Okay? So if you look at this one again, that right there, use zero, is inventory. Just like a variable, you could have a variable that says spell equals fireball, all right? And you can just set it and forget it, and later on when you call on the word spell, it'll write the word fireball instead because, you know, that's how variables work. Or you could say ammo equals three zillion, and it goes up and down as you, as you go through the game. Either way, an array works like that. So the word inventory, if we were using a character spec sheet, it could be character name is Tommy, class equals whatnot, you know, like a mage or a warrior, his power equals 100. But instead of using an individual variable for each and every one of them, we put it all under one word, okay? So it would be car equal, car zero equals Tommy, car one, you know, so on and so forth, like like we have it written out here. We put it all together and we'll look at that in a second. So think of the entire array as a whole like a library of all the information that you're keeping. It's a great way to use uh, an arsenal or a spell book of all the spells that you could be using, okay? Or how much magic each one costs either way. The cool thing about it is that as you saw each one is assigned a number and you can call upon it by number. What this means is when you're using item 0 out of your array, you're not using items 1, 2, and 3, okay? If you've ever used a weapon switching system and you say, I'm using the machine gun now, that means you wind up having to write it in a step event, right? You have to write, I'm not using the bazooka, I'm not using the flamethrower, I'm not using you know, the laser gun, and then do it all again for the next one. The cool thing about an array is when you switch to the other row, the other number there, it automatically is off on all the other ones. I have another tutorial that's on switching music, and it's really cool because you switch you know, per song, and it switches the other ones off because it's only using one thing at a time, so it's cool. Very cool. If I didn't say cool enough, it's cool. Uh, you can use arrays and just a regular old variable together. That's actually a great way to use arrays, and we're going to do that. You can use arrays with other arrays. You can stack them up and use two at once, three at once, four at once. Here's an example. Each row of an array could be used for an item that you either have or you don't have, so that in the first example you have here, key zero means that you're referring to the gold key. You either have it or don't have it, and in this example, one means you've got it. Key one would be the silver key, and you can keep going. Key two equals bronze key. Key three, blah, blah, blah. It could also be a way to collect information about how many of an item you've got. So ammo for 0 equals 10 shots, ammo for 1 equals 20, on and on and on. Uh, it might be the other way around. It could be the cost of that item. And because each of these is like a variable, 
that can change. You remember what I told you before? So in this cost, in this case here, the mana cost is not going to change. Every time you cast spell zero, it's going to pull mana zero. It's always going to cost five. You're never going to change that value. But in this case over here, ammo zero, you've got ten of them. That's why talking about arrays gets confusing is because you can use them kind of in a direct way. It is, you know, item zero is fireballs item one is your ice shards and you've either you know acquired that or you haven't like in this case you've either got that gold key or you don't got the gold key one or the other um, but in the other cases you know the ammo case it can change there's two different types of arrays and this is as confusing as we're gonna get this is it okay you ready buckle your seat belts there's 1d and 2d arrays we're gonna focus on 1d a 1d array as you just saw has got a number associated with it. It'll be inventory 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, blah, 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 all the way down. A 2D array allows you to write two numbers in there. So instead of just saying array 0, you'd write array 00, array 01, array 10. And uh, that'll make you a little crazy, but it's useful because you could keep up with the name of an item and the sprite that's associated with it, that kind of thing. Uh, you could keep up with the item number and the ammo that it costs all at once instead of using two different arrays for it. All right, that's enough. Let's jump over to the game. If you're confused right now, don't worry. We're going to straighten you out in about two seconds. Uh, game maker, there we go. Uh, right, so let's start out looking at an array in use. Spell zero, spell one, two, three, four. You remember how I told you you could just set up an item and that's what that, that uh, row means? In this case, Spell zero is always going to be fireball. Spell one is always going to be ice shards. Because it's a variable, you could change that later on in the game so that you replace spell zero fireball with something else. So uh, it doesn't have to be that. But in the case of uh, in the case of the way we're using this one, we're just going to use it for weapon switching. Okay. So let's put it to work. We're going to go over to the draw event, and we're going to just draw text at x y, and we're going to draw. We're going to draw. What is it? spell zero okay we should be seeing the word fireball notice that it's in quotes here we're asking game maker to draw the word fireball that's important to realize that we're not actually having the character cast fireballs we're just asking for the word fireball that's another thing that you you might have been wondering why the heck do people do that because sometimes they'll write they'll write something like this spell zero equals zero not wait a minute which one is it well that's just the number when you're trying to cast fireballs in your game you can't go cast the word fireball it has to have a number so instead of casting fireball you're gonna cast whatever number you want to call it you don't have to call it zero you can call it fireballs could be spell number 78 game maker doesn't care what people are doing behind the scenes is that they're giving it a number that's just the same as the row just to keep themselves from going crazy so they'll just say spell zero equals zero so later on when you put that to use it'll make more sense but in order for you to understand what we're doing right now we're just going to ask the game to draw the word fireball I'm trying to make that distinction so that you understand later on when you're trying to make your game and you're like oh, it's not making fireballs well you can't make the word fireball you have to make a number that's so it would have to be like that. See what I mean? Now, we're cast. We're we're asking it to show spell zero. Okay, that's cool. Well, what if we want to go to the next one? Each one of them is numbered. And you remember the benefits that I talked about? That you can call upon it by number. Let's do that. So instead of saying spell zero, why don't we replace zero with a standard variable? Let's go back over here to our draw. We're drawing spell zero. Well, what if we make a new variable? So we're going to call it spell casting. And back on the create event, we'll make casting. Casting equals zero. You remember how I said this is like a library? This is a library of every everything that your character could be casting. Okay? That's the important differential. You need to remember that. When you get in later on and you're trying to use this, and you're saying, ah, he's not working on spells here. This is like a library of everything that they could be using. This is an arsenal of all the weapons they could be uh, holding. It's a library of everything. We're going to put it to work 
with a standard variable. So this is not the spell that they're actually using right now. This is the spell that they could be using. And because casting equals zero, and we asked it to draw the value of casting, we should still get fireball. And we do. Isn't that exciting? I know, we just went round and round and round just to get it to do the same thing. Well, what we just did with that variable, because we replaced that value zero with the variable casting, now this gives us a control. This gives us the ability to cycle through that. If you haven't already caught on to what I'm about to do, keep your eyes peeled. Uh, what are we going to do? Key release, key release up. And we're going to write, um, let's write casting plus equals one. If you don't know anything about uh, game maker coding, uh, I haven't uh, done anything super complicated, but this means we're going to take casting increase by one. So casting is going to change from being zero, casting is going to change to one. So when I push the up key, what it's going to do is change to ice shards, heal, vanish, soul drain, etc., etc. The way that excuse me, the way that's working is because it's drawing the text of spell casting. So instead of you having to switch one by one, it's going to just cycle through the whole list. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I know that's exciting. What happens if I go too far? Oh dear, oh dear. It runs into an error. You'll have to fix that. This is something just good housekeeping for you later on. You need to make sure that it's going to cycle through. If you go too far through a weapon switching list like that, like spell four, it's going to give you an error because it tried to switch to spell five that doesn't exist. So what we'll do is in a step event, we will fix that. So we'll say if casting is greater than four, casting equals zero. Okay. Boom, 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 boom. Look, now it's cycling all the way through. Isn't that fun? As you might have guessed, we could also do it the other way around. We could also add in a um, release down key, and then we'll have a uh, variable doing the opposite thing. So we'll just do it real quick if casting is less than zero casting equals uh, four and then we'll add a key release down casting subtracts by one if you haven't done any coding that's all that means casting will subtract by one when you press down and the step event will make sure that it loops back. So I'm going to go up and down through this list real fast and I'll see how cool that is. Boom, 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 boom. And we're going to go down. Dun, 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 dun. And it's going backward and forward. Isn't that cool? Isn't that cool? Okay, one last example. Now you remember how I told you that you can use an array in a direct way that you've already preloaded it with everything or you can make it something that works more like a variable whereas it changes all the time. We could use the same kind of a concept of an array and we will do like a mana cost sort of a thing. So we could say cost of 0 equals 5 and the uh, cost of pardon me, 1 equals two. Uh, you can go on and on this way. The cool thing about that is because you're already using the variable called casting, later on when you start using that that uh, machine gun and it costs you 10 bullets per shot or that uh, this one in, in this case it's going to cost you five mana you can do the same exact thing that you just did on drawing the word fireball when you hit the button to execute that spell the casting cost will be filled in there okay so later on when you say on key release of spacebar or uh, whatever your attack button is that's just a example key release of spacebar we're going to do you'd have a, a mana co a, a mana amount you know uh, mana subtract by uh, what was that cost of casting you see there so on create, let's say we had a, uh, 
So I just gave us 100 mana. And then when we hit the space bar, mana will subtract by the cost of casting. You got me? So let's go ahead and draw the value of mana so that we can see it working. And we'll hit the space bar and we'll make it do something. OK. I'll just copy that. And we'll draw um, y plus 100. And we will draw the value of mana. And when I hit the space bar, we should be subtracting. 100, 95, 90. Ice shards. Ice shards cost something different. We're going to go back to Fireball. Boom, boom, boom. Isn't that fun? Obviously, I didn't fill in the rest of it here. But if I had, you'd be able to have a mana cost associated with everything. Now, you're probably thinking, what if I add more spells to this? What if I add more weapons to this? Well, in that case, uh, you'd have to go back and change. Remember, your step event is looping it you would have to change that as well. You could, if you want to make your life easier, just replace that with uh, a variable as well. So we'll call it, um, you know, I don't know, total spells. Why would you do that? Why would you do that? Back over here, we could make that variable total spells equals four. And we'll just make a note to ourselves with that slash slash and say, uh, you know, adjust if you add more spells. And that means we don't have to revisit that step event on this. See, that's still working. We didn't break anything, right? And if we add another, if we add another spell, or just for jollies, if we take one away, total spells equals three, we don't have to revisit that step event now. Uh, to make it loop. See that? Isn't that cool? Isn't that cool? It's so cool, Stabrak. I'm going to give you a plus thumbs up on your video. Thank you for that. All right, anything else we need to go over here, guys? Are you all uh, caught up here? Uh, there, there's so many different ways that we can, we can use these arrays and put them to work. Um, I mentioned before that you could have an array that shows you where you've got an item or not. This is really cool because let's say you want your character to start off not having any spells in his spell book. So instead of saying you've already got the fireball spell, um, you could you could you know, every everyone could be empty. Because this works like a variable, you remember that line is like a variable. A variable can, by its very nature, vary, right? You could say if it equals if uh, spell zero equals um, you know empty, then uh, you know now now it's going to equal whatever spell you just picked up. If your character runs across the spell book page for you know the vanish spell, uh, it can go ahead and do that. All right, so that's about it for that tutorial. Uh, I hope that was informative to you to get your feet wet in this. Uh, about how to use an array. If you've got any questions, post them below. And uh, if this was helpful, I hope you will give me a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, please don't give me a thumbs down. Just tell me why and, or just go away. All right, thanks a lot. See you guys later.